Hey, what's going on guys? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you how to install Recallbox on your Odroid XU4 or your Odroid C2. This will work with any operating system, Windows, Linux, or OS X. So don't worry about what operating system you're using because this software works on everything. Let's get a couple things out of the way before we start downloading the image and flash it to our SD card. You're going to need an SD card or your eMMC storage with a reader. I'm using a 16 gigabyte class 10 SD card for the operating system. And I'm gonna be loading my ROMs from a USB drive. Now this is just a small one I had laying around so I figured I'd use it for this tutorial. But you're gonna want something bigger like 32 gigabytes or 64 for your USB. They both need to be formatted FAT32. Just go to properties here. You can see my SD card here, FAT32, and my USB drive is also formatted FAT32. Let's go ahead and download the image and the software we're going to need to flash this to our SD card. We'll open up a browser, and in the description here, I will leave all links for you. In this video, I'm gonna be using an Odroid XU4, so I'm gonna get the Odroid XU4 image here. I will also upload the Odroid XU4 image to a mega account. So there are two links in the description for the XU4 download. If you're using an Odroid C2, you're going to be stuck with Remix 4.1 for now. It still works great. I'm going to download Odroid XU4. While we're waiting for the image to download, let's go ahead and get Etcher. Links in the description. Depending on the operating system you are using, you'll need to choose one accordingly here. Mac, Linux, Windows 64-bit, or Windows 32-bit. Now I downloaded the Windows installer. Very quick download and I've already installed it. I'm gonna go to my desktop. And I have Etcher right here. I also have the downloaded image of Recallbox. Now your image might say .gz at the end of it. It might look like this. Let me go ahead and rename it and show you what it may look like if you download it. Yours may look like this. You're just gonna go ahead and right click, rename, and remove that gz. So we just want it to look like a .img. We're gonna open up Etcher. This will allow us to flash that image to our SD card. Very nice user interface, very easy to use. Over here with select image, we're gonna click on this and navigate to where we downloaded the image we're going to flash. Mine's on my desktop in a folder called recallbox xu4. Recallbox.image, double click. Now we need to select the drive we want to flash to. So we'll click on select drive. And this is a bit important here. You want to select your SD card. So go back over this way. Find your SD card drive letter. My SD card is drive E, but I've renamed them so I know exactly where they are. My SD card is E. We'll go back over here and find drive E. Continue. We're gonna click flash. What it's gonna do is flash it to the SD card, then it's gonna verify the files. This could take a little bit of time, depending on the speed of your SD card. So let it sit for a little while, let it finish. It will notify you when it is done. Okay, now that the flash is complete, all we're gonna do is remove our SD card and USB drive from our PC. Place our SD card in our XU4 and connect your controller of choice. Let's move over to the XU4 now. Okay guys, I have my HDMI plugged into my XU4, my Xbox 360 controller plugged into the USB 2.0 port, my freshly flash SD card, and I have my USB drive sitting here because we're going to need that after we boot up. Now this is a class 10 card, so it's gonna work a little faster than some people with a class four card. This is where a lot of people get stuck. 
If you flash to the SD, make sure your switch over here is set to SD. If you flashed it to an EMMC module, make sure it is on EMMC. So we're going to plug the unit in. It's going to take up to 10 minutes for the first boot because it needs to resize the file system and all that good stuff that goes on behind the scenes. Be patient. Let it sit. If yours doesn't boot up within 10 minutes, you may want to reconsider reflashing the SD card or getting a better SD card. Let's go ahead and plug it in. So the blue light should start flashing here shortly to let us know that the kernel is running. There we go. And what it's doing now is resizing the recall box file system on our SD card. So we need to let it sit, be patient. Mine usually takes about three minutes. Now this is only the first boot. After this initial boot, it will boot up very, very quickly for us. Let it sit. The fan will stop and then the unit will restart and you'll have a picture on your screen. And there we have it. Do you hear the music in the background there? Recall box is booted up. So just be patient with it because it's gonna boot up. Depending on the speed of your SD card, mine took three minutes and 27 seconds to boot up the very first time. After that, it should boot up fairly quickly for you. Let's move over to the XU4 recall box interface and I'll show you how to add ROMs to your USB drive and get to playing some of your favorite retro games. So now that we're booted up here, I have my Xbox 360 controller plugged in. I'm just going to hold A on the controller. It's going to bring up the configure input screen. So it's detected my one game pad. Hold your A button. This is your D-pad up, down, left, right. This is your left joystick, up and left. This is your right joystick, up and left. A, B, X, Y, start, select. Now page up and page down are your LB and RB buttons on the Xbox 360 controller. So your upper left and right bumpers. L2, R2, I missed that one on accident. L3 is your analog stick button, so press in your analog stick. R3 is your right analog stick. And your hotkey can be set to pretty much any key, but I always set mine to the middle Xbox button. When it goes to OK, press whatever button you set up as B. Now, we can use the... Now we can use our controller to navigate recall box. So Recall Box does come pre-installed with a few games. Now these aren't the greatest games in the world. Most of these are freeware or custom games made. We want to add some really awesome games. So let's go back to the menu. The USB stick that you formatted FAT32 needs to be plugged in. So let's go ahead and plug that in. And I'm using a USB 3.0 port on the XU4. Press start on your controller, scroll to system settings, storage device. It's preset to internal, but I'm going to use my 4 gigabyte USB drive. Back. When the system reboots, it's going to create a folder on our USB drive named recall box. Inside of that folder will be a BIOS folder, ROMs folder, video folder, all the folders we need to add stuff to our recall box. It's also going to replace the system config, so we'll need to reset up our controller. It's no big deal. You only have to do this one time. Press OK, and the system's going to reboot. Now that we're rebooted, we need to reset up our controller because it put a new system configuration file on our USB drive. If you press any button on your controller, you'll get the configure input menu again. Go ahead and set your controller up. This is the last time you'll need to set your controller up until you change your USB drive. If you ever want to go to a different USB drive, 
you have to reset your controller up, but it's not a big deal. So now it's time to go back to the PC. We're going to take our USB drive back out of the XU4, place it into our PC. I'll show you what folders were created on the USB drive, and we can add our ROMs and BIOSes from there. Then we'll just come back, plug the USB drive back in, reboot, and our ROMs should show up for us. Let's move over to the PC now. So now that we're back at the PC, we're going to plug in our USB drive that we just set up on our XU4 or within recall box. Mine is the four gigabyte USB. And as you can see, it's no longer empty. We have a recall box folder. Open this folder up. We have a BIOS folder, cheats, extractions, Kodi, music, ROMs, saves, screenshots, and system. I'm gonna be focusing on the ROMs folder here. Now some emulators require BIOSes like Game Boy Advanced and PlayStation. If you need to know which systems require BIOSes, I will leave a link in the description to Recallbox wiki page. You can find all the information you ever need there. Let's open up the ROMs folder. And inside of here we have all of our system folders or console folders. So what we're going to do is just take ROMs and place them in the corresponding system folder here. I have a few ROMs on my desktop already. So I'm going to open up SNES and these are my ROMs on my PC and this is the Recallbox USB drive. We're going to find SNES and I'm just going to take these and place them right onto the USB drive. I'm going to find some Neo Geo games and I'm going to find my Neo Geo folder on my USB drive. I'm just going to take these games here and with Neo Geo you do need a BIOS, Neo Geo.zip. I'm going to take all of these and place them right in here. The Neo Geo BIOS goes in the Neo Geo ROM folder. It's not like other systems. It needs to go in the ROM folder. I'm going to add some Nintendo 64 games. So here are my games on my PC. Here's my USB drive. We'll find N64 here. And I'll just take my ROMs and place them directly on my USB drive in the N64 ROMs folder. So you would just continue by filling up all of your console or system ROM folders. But I'm going to stop right now for this tutorial. I just added some SNES, some Neo Geo, and some N64 games. Now these are going to stay on the USB drive forever. They will not transfer to the SD card. So Using this method, you need your USB drive plugged into your XU4 or whatever Odroid you're using because it's going to run the ROMs from the USB drive. So we're going to go back to the Odroid. We're going to plug in our USB drive. We're going to reboot one time and all of those games we just added to our USB drive will show up within Recall Box. Let's go back to the Odroid now. So I'm back. I'm plugging in my USB drive now into the Odroid. I'm going to press start on my controller. Scroll down to quit, restart system. Yes, really restart. When we restart, all those ROMs that are on our USB drive will show up within recall box. Press yes. If it ever seems to freeze while it's rebooting, you may need to unplug it. I've had that happen to me twice. So that's something to note. When you do a restart, sometimes it doesn't restart correctly. You'll need to unplug your Odroid and plug it back in. So now that we've rebooted once, when I scroll over, I should now have a Nintendo 64 logo and a Neo Geo logo on the menu here. And there's our N64. If I enter this, these are the games I added to the USB drive. And I should also have a Neo Geo. And here it is. So I do recommend rebooting after you add your games to your USB drive. 
But sometimes you might need to press start on your controller, go to game settings, scroll all the way down to the bottom and update games list. Sometimes this does not work for me. I'm not sure if it's a bug with the Odroid or whatever it is, but you might need to do that if your games aren't launching after you reboot or they just don't show back up after you reboot. Little tiny things here and there, you'll find it easy to use this. Once you got it set up, it works really, really well. So I'm gonna go to Neo Geo and play a game. Blazing Star, favorite game. So when playing Neo Geo, select will insert your credits. As you see at the bottom, I'm up to three. If I press it again, I'll go to four. Press start on your controller. We'll just go through a little bit of gameplay here. So this is a really, really awesome game here. And if you want to exit a game, you need to hold your hotkey, whatever button you set up as your hotkey, and press start on your controller. So I'm going to hold my hotkey and press start. That will exit us back out into the recall box front menu here. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you could, hit that like button and subscribe because I got a lot more coming. In my next video, I'm going to show you guys how to add artwork to these menus here. If you look now, it's very, very plain, but I'll show you guys how to add a screenshot and some info about the game. Like always, thanks for watching.